So we've already talked about two different methods that we can use to solve systems of equations. Um, the first method was using a graph and finding where the lines intersected. The second method was using substitution and plugging something in instead of one of the variables. The third method is a method called elimination. Now to eliminate something means to get rid of one of the variables. So we're going to be able to just sort of get rid of one of the variables so that instead of having an x and a y in our equation, we only have an x or we only have a y. And that will allow us to solve the problem much easier. There are a couple steps for using elimination. The first is make sure all of the terms are lined up vertically. Now vertically means going up and down. You may need to rearrange one or the other equation to make this happen. And here's what I mean by lined up. In the first equation, the term that has an x is directly above the second equation's term that has an x. So the x's are lined up. The term that has a y in the first equation is directly above the term that has a y in the second equation. The terms are lined up. The equal sign is above the equal sign. They're lined up. The number on the other side that does not have an x or a y, we call that a constant, is above the term that does not have an x or a y, the constant in the second equation. So we mean everything is lined up going up and down. Now you want to examine the coefficients. The coefficients are the numbers with the variables. Your goal here is that you want two of the coefficients to eliminate each other. For example, if you have a 2x and a negative 2x, those would cancel each other out. Or if you have a 2y and a negative 2y, those would cancel each other out. So you're looking for the same number, the number 2, or the number three, or the number four, but with opposite signs. So you want one of the numbers to be positive and the other one to be negative. After you make that happen, and you might have to do some work to make that happen, I'll show you in a second what you might be able to do, then you always add the two equations together. Now some students go, do you always add? Do you sometimes subtract? You always add vertically. It's always addition. After you do that, one of your variables should cancel. So you're going to solve for one of your values and then use that value to solve for the other variable. So the end of this problem is going to look very similar to what we did with substitution where we take our answer, we plug it in to get the other one. Let's take a look at this example. The first thing is, all of my terms are lined up. That part's already good. Now look at the numbers. The invisible number by the x is a 1, and this x has a negative 3. They're not going to cancel. The number by the top y is a 2. The number by the bottom y is a 2. They're not going to cancel, but they're close. Now what do I mean by they're close? Well, if one of those 2's was a negative, we'd be good to go. So here's what you can do to make one of them a negative. We can choose to multiply this equation by a negative one. Now when I say multiply, I mean every single term in this equation gets multiplied. So we're basically distributing to everybody. Negative one times one would change that first number to a negative one x. Negative one times two would change the second number to a negative 2y. And then you would have your equal sign, and negative 1 times 12 would change your last number to a negative 12. Now, the second equation, we're not going to change anything. So we're just going to copy down the negative 3x plus 2y equals negative 12. Now you'll notice that because I multiplied by negative 1, the coefficient of the top y became a negative 2, and the bottom is a positive 2. So these two terms 
will cancel because negative 2 plus 2 cancels. So now we're going to add. It's always addition. Negative 1x plus negative 3x would be negative 4x. I'm just adding up and down. The negative 2y and the positive 2y would cancel each other out. And negative 12 plus negative 12 is negative 24. So when I solve this equation, I get x equals 6. Now all I'm going to do is take this 6, plug it in to the first original equation. That means before you multiplied by anything, and see what I get. So instead of x, I would have 6 plus 2y equals 12. I would subtract the 6, and I would have 2y equals 6, and then divide by 2, so y equals 3. So your final answer here would be 6 comma 3. All right, let's try a couple examples and see if we can practice getting rid of one of the variables in order to solve the problem. So problem number one. First is everything lined up. The x is on top of the x. The y is on top of the y. The number is on top of the number. The equal sign is on top of the equal sign. We're good. Now look at the numbers. Do you see any numbers here who would eliminate? Right away I notice that the 2x and the negative 2x will cancel each other out. So I don't need to multiply by anything in this problem to make that happen. In the first example, we had to choose to multiply by negative 1 to change the signs of one of the values. Here, they're already good to go, so these are going to cancel. Which means if I add 3y plus 5y is 8y, 11 plus 13 is 24, so I would divide by 8 to get the y by itself, and I would get y equals 3. Now that I know that y equals 3, I'm just going to plug the 3 into the original equation and solve for x. So 2x plus 3 times, instead of the y, I'm going to plug in the number 3, equals 11. Now 3 times 3 is 9, so what I have here is 2x plus 9 equals 11. I would subtract the 9 on both sides, so 2x equals 2, and then divide by 2 on both sides, so x equals 1, which means my final answer is 1 comma 3. Oop, you can't see what I wrote there at the bottom. 1 comma 3, because it's x comma y. Let's try a few more examples. So in problem number two, <coughs> in problem number two, the first thing I want to check to make sure is that all of the val values are lined up. So I notice that the x is on top of the x, the y is on top of the y, the equals is on top of the equals, and the, the number is on top of the number. We're good to go. Now I'm going to look at the values. Do any of these values cancel? Well, the 6 and the negative 3 will not cancel. The negative 4 and the positive 4, however, will cancel. So the negative 4 and the positive 4 will cancel, which means I get 3x equals 15. Now, where did I get that 3x from? Well, 6x plus negative 3x is 3x. So divide both sides by 3, we get x equals 5. Now we need to take that number and plug it into the original problem and see if we can get the y by itself so we can find y. So we would have 6 and instead of the x I would plug in the number 5 minus 4y equals 14. 6 times 5 is 30 minus 4y equals 14. Subtract the 30 on both sides, so negative 4y equals negative 16. Divide by negative 4, y equals 4, which means my final answer will be 5 comma 4. 
Now, we've often said we could check our answers if we wanted to, but problem number three on this says you have to check your solution to number two. In other words, sometimes, like on a test or a quiz, I might say that you are forced to check your answer. So what would that look like? What does it look like if I want you to show your work for checking your answer? Well, since we know that we found that this was the X and this was the Y that would work for this original problem, we're going to take that X and take that Y and plug it in and see if it really does work. We know we need to check both equations. So first, we would have 6 parentheses 5 minus 4 parentheses 4 equals 14. I'm taking this X and I'm plugging it in here, taking this Y and I'm plugging it in here. We would get, if we simplify this either on your calculator or in your head, you would get 14 equals 14. So that one really does work. Now for problem number two, we would take this X and take this Y and plug it into the second equation. 3 times 5 plus 4 times 4 equals 1. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15 plus 4 times 4 is 16, so you get 1 equals 1, which is also true. But you are not done yet. You have to now, if the problem says check your solution, you have to tell me what this means. It worked for the first equation, it worked for the second equation, so what does that mean? Here is the important part. You need to write a sentence as part of this answer, and the sentence is going to look the same way every single time. You would say 5 comma 4, so this answer, satisfies both original equations. Therefore, it is the solution. This right here is super important and you are going to want to practice writing this out a lot of times because I 100% guarantee you this will be part of what's on your test or your quiz and just showing me this work is not enough. Now it's part of it, you need to show me the work where you plugged in the equation but it's not enough to just stop there you need to write a sentence. The sentence is going to be the same thing every time. You are going to tell me the answer and then you are going to say satisfies both original equations therefore it is the solution every single time. Alright let's try one last example. So in example 4 it says um, we need to use elimination. The first thing I notice is that all of the equations here are lined up. That means that the x's are on top of the x's, the y's are on top of the y's, the equals are on top of the equals, the numbers are on top of the numbers. That's good. Now the second thing is do any of the variables cancel? Well I see that the 3's are really close to canceling. And I say close because if one of those was negative this would be perfect. So to make one of those negative, we can multiply by negative 1 to that entire first equation and it will turn that number into a negative. When I distribute, I get negative 4x minus 3y, and I'm being really careful here so I don't miss something, and negative 1 times 2 would be negative 2. Now the bottom equation doesn't need to change. So we would have 5x plus 3y equals negative 2. And now the y's will eliminate because they have the same, they have opposite signs for their coefficients. 3 and negative 3 will cancel. So negative 4x plus 5x would just be 1x. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. Now if I take this negative 4 and I plug it into the original problem, it's going to give me my value for y. So I would have 4 times negative 4 plus 3y equals 2. Now if I solve this, 4 times negative 4 is negative 16 plus 3y equals 2. I would add the 16 on both sides. So 3y equals 18 
and then I would divide by 3 on both sides, so y equals 6. So my final answer here would be negative 4, comma 6. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope that elimination seems like it makes sense to you. We will practice this a lot tomorrow, and I will see you then.